Hey, welcome everybody to this episode of the U.S. Boat Expo. We're here with a good friend of mine, Karen Roberts. She actually better more than a good friend. She's the one that helped me in the industry with my clients when I was selling boats and um, and did a lot to teach me the industry. And we're going to tap into her over 30 years of experience um, working in the service side of the industry and specifically as a warranty coordinator. Is that the right title, Karen? One of them. <laughs> <laughs> one of the many she's had over yeah. the years so let, let's start by um just kind of sharing how many brands you've worked with all the different roles that you've had within the industry started out as fiberglass technician doing that i don't think i knew that yeah okay I, interesting I yeah and then i went to parts and then i went to a service writer and then the service manager and then I backed up a little bit and did the warranty administration. And then back to service manager for six locations. Yeah. So she's had a lot of experience in that service part, which buying the boat is one thing and working with the salesperson like myself is, hey, our, we get paid when you buy the boat. Now, most boat salespeople are good and they're not going to do any just flat out lying, but it's Karen's part that makes sure that you have years and years of happy boating as a salesperson job and your buyer's job is to make sure that you get the right boat for the way you're going to boat. And then it's somebody like Karen that is going to help make sure that you're taken care of at the dealership. So what I think we're going to learn today is how to, how the service department works, how warranty works, what you need to know. So you don't make a mistake up front with the salesperson that's going to catch you a year, two years, five years down the line with the ownership portion. So, and Karen, you've worked with a bunch of brands over those years as well, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are just a handful of them that I know Sea Ray and Harris and Whaler, um, Yamaha Jet Boats? Bennington Pontoon, Nautique, um, Mercury, Engine Wise, OMC, Yamaha. And Yamaha boats. Okay, so there's been a there's been a bunch of them. Um, Scout, were you there when they were doing Nautic Star? Uh, Columbia, yeah. Okay, okay, so yeah, and with six locations in, in one of the the larger dealerships in the southeast, she had a variety of experience. Some saltwater stores she was managing, freshwater stores, big little marinas um, off the interstate. So there's a, a lot of variety that she had exposure to. And saw not only at the level of, of being actually in the shop that was doing the work, but also the what got escalated, what really caused caused clients problems and concerns and anger and frustration. And my guess is you've dealt with more than your share of, of unhappy customers that oh. um, didn't know some of the stuff we're going to talk about. Right. So um, let's start with because most of the people that are watching are, are going to be boat buyers. What are some of the things that they should know about how the warranty process works on a boat, on a motor, on a trailer, and even the components within? Like, talk about that a little bit. On the boat, the manufacturer, like the cushions, the uh, hardware, a lot of the radios and stuff like that you file with the boat now some of them actually like stereos have their own separate warranty and the manufacturer will say we don't warrant you that we'll send you to clarion or sony or whoever it may be and the engine everything about the engine goes to mercury or yamaha whatever type engine you have yep now, how, how does that, uh, for your side, that changes how you do it, but as the boat owner, um, the reason I think they need to know about it is because they're going to you and they're thinking, my boat brand isn't standing behind me um, when I, there's a component issue, but, but how do you see that from your side? Because you can, I'm, I'm sure over the years, you can see both sides. Like, I see that you bought a Sea oh, Ray or you bought a whatever. And now you're having an issue with this Clarion stereo and talk about that just a little bit. Cause I think that's an interesting thing to understand. 
if the manufacturer says no we don't warranty that then you go to the clarion dealer that the manufacturer actually bought the clarion from so a lot of them just do trade out so the customer may be left without a radio because you got to send his in to get a new one or a refurbished one whatever it may be and sometimes you have to get the customer involved and say hey i need your help calling c ray or whoever it may be saying look i need a stereo and i don't want to ride all weekend without one so yeah and there's there's also um the dealer or, or yourself we'll talk about you and the warranty administrator role that you that you had for a while um your relationship with the manufacturer your relationship with the with the oem on the on the engine or whoever is key as well because I, I i'm not 100 percent sure but my guess is you got some warranty items approved for some of my clients that another dealer wouldn't have oh, um, yeah. is is there a system that you've got to work is, is it does it matter who that person is in the relationship they have most of the time they have a representative that does your location okay so typically you'll talk to the same person once in a while you'll get a different person but in my opinion if if i know there's a problem i'm gonna aggravate <laughs> the crap out of somebody until i get what i want yeah so it might take more than one phone call and if i get to a dead end i'll get the customer involved and say hey i need you to make a phone call to customer service I need your help. Be nice, respectful, but let's do this together. And a lot yep. of times I'll call the customer in and come sit with me and we'll call them together. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think you got to do to get it, get it done. Yeah. And sometimes the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease of, you know, if you talk to your dealer and the dealer says, no, we can't do it. One, this is why I teach the deal, the boat that you buy is important, but the dealer that you buy from on the new side, is as important, if not more important, because of these types of things. If you've got a dealer that doesn't seem to be all that customer service focused um, during the sales portion, during this portion, ew, you're in trouble. And hey, go and talk to the people in service. Go talk to the parts yeah. person. Go talk to the, the service writer or the service manager if they're that big, um, the warranty administrator if they have one and you can get access because that's going to tell you what uh, hey are they going to be one like karen to call you in and say hey bob I, I know it's a pain but come sit with me for 20 minutes and we're going to get this x taken care of for you because i truly believe it should be warranted um and, and i just need your help versus somebody that says man i got so much other work to do i don't have time they said no uh, tough luck yeah. um and, and uh, unfortunately <laughs> it yeah it happens doesn't it mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so as a, as a owner, try to partner up with that warranty administrator, try to partner up with that service department. I know you're angry, but they should be on your side, um, and work and they're going to know the ins and outs and you're going to have the, I'm the customer. And if, again, like you said, don't be nasty. Um, but be persistent, probably the right word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so did you find there was a lot of difference between working with one manufacturer and another, um, even though the warranty was similar, Let, you know, the five year bout of stern warranty or, or seven years on the pontoons, two year warranty on the components or the engine? Um, did you see a, a major difference between brand to brand? And was there a premium versus value? I don't know. Were you there in the Stingray days? I was, that's when I was doing the fiberglass repair. The glass work. Okay. Um, did, did you see any difference there between the brands? Oh yeah, absolutely. Usually the, the larger boat companies are better. Okay. They, they're just more equipped to take care of the problems you have. The smaller guys, it takes forever to get a part. It takes forever to get an answer. I mean, it's just totally different. Okay. Is but there... The Ray and Mer Cruiser, Mercury, those those guys are great. They they stand behind it pretty well. Did you you didn't really work with Volvo ever, did you? I, I no. don't know that 
they ever had any Volvo, but you've done Mercury for sure. Um, you a little bit of Yamaha or, or uh, right. I guess in Charleston and Savannah, you might've done more Yamaha right. with, uh, so, um, yeah. And again, just knowing that going in that, and, and I'm not pushing any brands by any means, but that sometimes the larger manufacturers are going to have, are going to stand behind it better because they're better equipped and the dealership that has the positions where it's not one person doing the five jobs, but it's three people doing the five jobs. Cause it's never five people doing five jobs. Is it? Right. Right. <laughs> I, I know you at least had two or three at all times that I worked with you. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Anything that the, that the boat owner can do to help Im- increase the likelihood that that claim will be approved um, just from the get go when they come and say, Oh, this broke. I need help. Pictures are number one. I always take a photo and do it as soon as the problem arises. Don't wait because there is a deadline that you have to meet. But okay. a, good warranty, a good warranty administrator can backdate if they have to. <laughs> they know the photos, system. Yep. With good photos and a real good story of what happened. You can, you can usually make it happen. What about the, it was operator error. Now that's not manufacturer defect. Cause that's, that's what the warranty is covering is manufacturer defect and the operator error or the normal wear and tear. It's a normal maintenance item. How do you distinguish between that? Cause you're out of the water and nobody knows what happens. Um, what? is the does the story that you tell matter it does and the the verbiage matters you got to use the correct words a lot of times they won't pay for a broken part okay Uh, a latch that won't latch because it's broken you don't say the latch is broken i need a new one the latch will not latch okay the door will not stay closed you got to use the verbiage of what is going on with the problem, not just that my latch is broke. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So that's where your 30 plus years of experience comes in is that one little language difference can be the difference between getting that issue taken care of and being really pissed off at everybody that you're dealing with. Cause I know it doesn't just go towards the manufacturer. It comes towards the dealer um, and everything about it. Um, and, and the key to this is, Let's try to know this stuff up front because I I don't know. You might know this of the boats that came in and we carried, we carried pretty premium brands. How many issues per boat before we even delivered it to the customer? Did you guys find Nixon, the gel coat, a bolt that wasn't tight, a screw that needs to be done up. Was it one or two or, or was there several things on average? Probably, well, on every boat you could find a, two or three things wrong. Yeah, Always. yeah. Always. A snap missing or a snap loose or a screw loose, a latch, a door won't latch or or whatever. I mean, you can find stuff. You just got to look yeah. for it, what to look for. Yeah, and, and again, that's why the dealer is so important because the a good dealer is going to go through that boat in a pre-delivery checklist and process and they're going to find as many of those things as possible maybe even or probably even put it on the water and run it for 20 minutes or so and make sure that it, okay we're good now we're ready to deliver it as a salesperson i would do that as well after service did theirs i would take it out and just do one last run through for you know 5 minutes to say is there anything i could catch um, maybe I could just tighten up a screw or whatever, but I didn't want the customer to have to deal with it. But I think it's important, especially for first time boaters to know is it's not like buying a, a Mercedes or a Toyota or a F-150 where they build a thousand a month or 10,000 a month or whatever. It's even Sea Ray and the big dealers are building 5,000 boats, 10,000 boats, maybe. Um, and they're all very much handmade. And because of that, there's issues that come up. And, yeah. and some of them are, you know, you, you hear the stories of I found nuts and bolts in the bilge compartment. 
par for the course for most manufacturers, I would say. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, so, okay. So language is important. Working with the, working with the dealer is important. Um, is there, I don't know how much you got into the, the actual reading of the warranty and what was in there specifically, but is there anything that people can look for if they're reading through the warranty before they buy the boat, that might be a heads up or is it just kind of a, yeah, it's lawyer speak and nobody really knows what it means until somebody approves or denies a claim. That's where you find the disclosures where they will take things they won't cover under warranty and look at the fine print. The fine print's always, always important, no matter what yes. you Yeah, I, I call them weasel clauses. It's, you know, it's that, man, this just seems like there's a lot of outs for them. And, and the warranty certainly is written in the manufacturer's favor um, right. on boat, motor, stereo, TV, it doesn't matter. They're always going to be in their favor. But yeah, I, I agree that that fine print is where the stuff that really matters, the, the marketing people that take it, the salespeople that say, hey, we have a 10 year warranty. It's bow to stern. Yeah, it's not really bow to stern, is it? <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Because a lot of them will say bumper to bumper, but there's no such thing as bumper to bumper. Yes. Yeah. And, and you even said it's um, okay. We've, and the, the manufacturers I think are getting better with this, but the, the, com they can divvy out the components and say, no, we don't cover the component, even though it's on our boat, you've got to go to, you know, JL audio, or you've got to go to Perco or you've got to go to whoever. Um, yeah, it's, it's different. Uh, and you, you've got to be, be on the lookout for that. Now, this is one I know, um, I see this on social media and in groups a lot is if I go, I'm looking for a boat and I shop your dealership and I say, I love that boat, but X, Y, Z dealer, a uh, 500 miles away will sell it to me for a dollar cheaper, a thousand dollar cheaper, $10,000 cheaper. And I buy it. And then I come back to you and I say, Karen, I just bought this boat. It's brand new. You're the warranty provider for xyz brand i need i've got this warranty claim can you help me um how does the dealer look at that in in reality if we didn't sell the boat it's probably not as good as it was if we sold you the boat just being yep. on yeah I mean, and i it's really important and talk about why that is um talk about how busy you are and and why some hey you wanted to save that money fine it's probably against the dealer agreement with the manufacturer because they have defined territories some are better enforced than others mm -hmm. um and but if you as a customer take that choice to save the money there um well the reality is what in service well the thing is is they usually, typically, they don't pay the full labor rate, and they don't pay you enough time to complete the job. So the dealer has the the customer's not going to pay for it because it's warranty. So he's not looking to pay anything out of pocket. So if they pay two hours to do a job that takes ten hours, guess who's paying? Yeah, and yeah. they pay what 80 percent and we'll, we'll get to this i don't think i had the senior questions but what, what percentage do they typically pay um of that a, some of them if you have a very high csi they'll pay 100 percent. okay but that means it still doesn't mean that they're going to pay you 10 hours that they have a flat rate of two hours right right so there's there's two things that i want to talk about is one is yes they're paying the warrant they're paying for the warranty work to be done but that doesn't mean they're paying for the total amount of time it takes to get that claim because not only do you have the the technician's time but you also have your time the parts person's time the back and forth with the with the uh, manufacturer none of that time is going to be accounted for and because they didn't sell the boat there's no profit to kind of offset that um but two, you mentioned the CSI scores, the customer service scores. A lot of manufacturers will to incent their dealers to be better 
to treat their customers better and and right, the warranty, the the warranty labor rate. It, it, let me make sure check me on this, Karen, that I get this right. The warranty labor rate is based on how well you do on customer service for your previous sales. Is that right? Right. right. So if you're at nine, what do you know what the levels are like 98% or is it 90 and 80? Do you know about where the, I think it would have to be above 90% to, to hit those marks. So it's something that is worth checking into because a, a dealer that has poor CSI scores, one tells you they don't have very good customer service, but two tells you that if you do have a warranty claim, they're less incentive to get on that job versus taking a customer that's paying the full uh, service shop rate, you know, of, of $100 an hour, $150 an hour, $200 an hour, depending on where you are in the country and, and what dealer you're working at. Um, and it, hey, it makes a difference. I mean, you want to say they sold me a $100,000 boat. I can't believe they're not taking care of me. But it makes a difference because there's a shortage of technicians. They're understaffed. It's seasonal, um, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Any any thoughts on that? The seasonal thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you get overwhelmed. <laughs> you feel like you run in a firehouse, like you're putting out fires all day long. And what are what are the and it matters what region you're in. You were in mostly the Carolinas, the Southeast. Right. Um, when were your big peaks? Um, and, and explain why so that people can adjust them to, I'm in Minnesota, I'm in Seattle, I'm wherever. Typically around April, end of March, April. South Carolina, they're, they're, the boating business starts. I mean, it's and it goes all the way through the 4th of July and after. Yep. So you've got the weather. It's cold. It's cold. It's cold. Oh, that first warm forecast. What happens to Karen's phone? It's ringing off the hook that week before right. there's going to be a 70, 80 degree Sunday or Saturday. And yep. it's through the roof until 4th of July, maybe even into Labor Day. Yep. Um, yep. And then, then what happens? You get So you get a month reprieve from let's say August, oh, you can breathe a little bit and then Labor Day hits and now what? Well, you start slowing down, you get a little bit of a lag there and then two cold weekends <laughs> in a row, it'll start winterization. Yep. And now you're, now it's a race against the clock and, and we were lucky in the South, you know, we, we could race against the clock, but we could also just drain the blocks and maybe put them in a building and, and get by, you know, without yeah. too much. But if you're up North, it's a real race against it's labor day. Oh crap. It could freeze next week. <laughs> and yeah. you got to start hauling boats and hauling docks and winterizing and getting them packed away and shrink wrapped. And that is not an easy task because it all takes a lot of time. And again, talk, talk a little bit about, um, capacity and well, why don't you just hire more techs? It should be easy enough. Just hire more people, right? You're paying them a hundred plus dollars or your shop rate. Is, what was our shop rate? Um, yeah. So you're paying, you're getting $125 an hour. You certainly can afford to hire a technician. You can't find them. The technicians are very hard to find. The good ones are extremely hard. And if you have one, pay him and keep him. Yes. Yeah. I know it's, um, it, it, it's something that people just assume, well, if you're paying that kind of money, well, you're, you're paying that kind of money because it's a very specialized knowledge and making a mistake in service can be costly. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it, you have probably dealt with newer technicians that just make a bonehead move that Man, next thing you know, that's a three thousand dollar mistake because you, you know, it, it, everybody seen the seen the meme on social media with the screws drilled right through the fiberglass, and you got Absolutely. all this. It, it, it's happened, right? It's happened to you, oh, yeah. I'm sure, not to you personally, but to somebody that worked for you. Oh yeah, Absolutely. and um, it's just it's too easy to make a simple mistake 
um, that turns into a very, very expensive mistake and potentially, you know, ends the season for a boater. Um, and, and they're just the good, well, technicians aren't out there and the good ones are like a needle in a haystack, I would say. Yes, absolutely. Um, so anything else that you learned, um, over that time that, Hey, as a new boat owner, or even a, a, a seasoned boat owner, what can you do to make your service easier um, so that you don't, oh man, I, I'm, I'm in, I'm all stressed out because it's not going to get winterized or, um, oh, I wanted to get this fixed, but it's going to be an eight week lag before they can actually get to it. Any suggestions from, from the service side that say, hey, you could do this to make it easier on yourself and, and get stuff done um, on your boat, like the time of year that you do it, the, the notice and that kind of thing. You can get, have your dealer take photos or you can send them photos and do a pre-authorization through warranty and actually say, okay, use your boat for three months and bring it in this winter when things are slow and let's do it so that we can not have to lose boating time. Yeah. That, and just like, just like the, you know, first warm, first warm weekend, the phone's ringing off the hook first two weeks of the cold phone's ringing off the hook. But if you talk to Karen in November, December, um, we're looking for something. <laughs> yeah. And so you can take advantage of that knowing the, the seasonality in the North, the Northern hemisphere, it's, it's March start to get busy. If you're up North, it's whenever ice out. Okay. We know about when ice out's going to be boom, busy labor day is another big kind of stopping point or the first two cold uh, weekend or two cold days. Is that what you said? Or two cold weeks, two, two cold weekends, two cold two. weekends. There you yeah. go. We didn't get out on it this weekend. We're not going to get out of it next weekend. We might as well just put it up. School starting. Yep. Okay. And it takes two nice weekends to dewinterize. Yeah, yeah, that, that's interesting. That and it's it's not a spot on the calendar. It's all about those two nice weekends. Yep. Um, I don't even think I caught on that in, in my years there. Um, but I guess I was on a different. I was my season was a little bit different because of the boat show and sales. Um, that you have a different perspective there. That's good. That's good. Um, I, was, okay. I got go that. ahead remark came from rod hall the owner mm. of Old marine yeah he always told me two nice weekends is gonna be on kiddo <laughs> get ready <laughs> um okay so what other what other things from your experience um over the long haul will be valuable for for boat owners to know that are going to be working with the dealer Any, anything else that you think just in general context would be valuable for, for them to know that's been in your head for years. If the dealer can't get your warranty covered, if it's a stereo or any kind of electronic GPS or whatever it is, go directly to the name brand of the GPS or stereo. You can go online or you can probably get a phone number or go online and talk to them. And a lot of times they'll help. If you can. Okay. Get interesting. So you just got to go out, got to think outside the box a little bit and just go, you know, over to dealer if you have to. And if it's out of warranty, you know, a lot of times dealers say, I'm sorry, your boat's out of warranty. So you can go to that vendor, you know, whoever it may be, Clarion, Sony, whoever it is, and say, look, my boat's just out of warranty. I, my radio stopped working. Can you help me? And a lot of them will at least send you a part interesting okay yeah that's great um and that and it comes back to what you initially started with is be persistent um yeah. you know go to your dealer let them know right away so that you get that time stamp of this happened before my issue and then yeah. hopefully work with that uh with that warranty administrator the dealer to get all the paperwork done even if you're going to get the work done later but get it get it documented um right. and known up front and then if it's a valid claim, don't give up until you get an answer that you're happy with. Is there, are there any claims where you're like, that's just not valid? Um, there's, 
that's just not covered. And even though I want to be on your side, Mr. Customer, it's just not going to, you're just not going to get that approved. In my experience, a lot of the dealers, well, the dealers I work for, we would say, okay, it's not covered under warranty, but we'll supply the parts if you pay the labor. Okay. Okay. So at least there can be a kind of a, the dealer stepping up from the customer service side. Yeah. yeah. Helps out. Okay. Awesome. Karen, this has been great. I learned some stuff about you and uh, some, some ways to think about things that have been helpful for me too. So I really appreciate it. And you enjoy your beach house. I will. You take care. Thanks, Karen.